Hey folks, Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotion. Picking up uh, where we left off yesterday in Psalm 100 and drawing from John Stott's uh, excellent little gift book. It's uh, kind of a thin book that sits right on the old coffee table. Favorite Psalms. I think Kim and I found this in an uh, old used bookstore somewhere along the way. Loved uh, what he said about Psalm 100 summarizing it as one that declares that God is God, which is almost like stating the obvious, but I think sometimes something we really need to be reminded of, that God is God and we are not, that God is God and nothing else is. He's sui generis, he's unique, um, and that he's good as well, Psalm 100 declares. So as it began with shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth serve the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs, it begins properly with God, Psalm 100 does. And uh, man, that's a great way to start your day, great way to start the week, um, especially during the times of uh, uncertainty and turmoil as uh, we've been going through so much lately here in Nashville, as well as uh, those of you around the rest of the country and indeed the rest of the world. Where do we turn to for hope? Where do we look for uh, a message that might be able to calm us, uh, calm our fears? Uh, to refocus our attention on the God who is there, who hears our cries for mercy and who loves us. Uh, so we shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, and we go before him with gladness. We know that he is God. It's he who made us and we are his. What a great, great way to sum up. What does it mean to be a human person? It means to belong to him, it means to have been created in his image and to belong to him. The psalmist goes on to say we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. I think I mentioned yesterday we're compared, we human beings are compared to sheep some 200 times throughout the Bible. Um, uh, sheep are vulnerable, sheep need a shepherd desperately, and uh, sheep aren't the smartest. And, uh, or, you know, it's not like anybody has got a trained sheep that can do all kinds of tricks or anything like that. But, um, but here we find ourselves dependent, don't we? and uh, belonging to the one who, when he has a hundred sheep and one strays away, whether that's you or me, he'll leave the other 99 and come and get us. He comes in pursuit of us. He's the good shepherd as Jesus called himself. Uh, and so these five verses continue. I wanna read verses four and five and we'll kind of wrap this up for this week, but enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. So Rich there, another great reminder of how to start, how to approach God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. So you're coming into, if you kind of sort of, you know, imagine a, 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 the temple area and you're, you're coming in the initial entryway is through a gate and you're supposed to come with thankful hearts. And that's the way I think, uh, I need to be reminded over and over <laughs> to enter his presence. Um, so often looking for joy or looking for happiness and need to be reminded over and over again that joy is actually uh, a byproduct of gratitude. It follows gratitude. It's never the other way around. It's it's never, you mean joyful and then I'll be gratitude. No, then I'll be grateful. No, um, be grateful and begin with gratitude to the Lord for who he is, the fact that he's made us, the fact that we belong to him and he's He's got us. He holds us fast in his hands. And we can enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise, his courts with praise and give thanks to him and praise his name, verse four says. It's like they saying the same thing twice there. Did you notice that? And uh, I think that's because I need to be told the same thing twice over and over again. So he says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And then he says, and give thanks to his name in the last part of the verse. And there is courts with praise. And the last part of the verse is, and praise his name. And so we offer our thanksgiving and our praise to our Lord, to the one to whom we belong. And then he closes, verse five closes out Psalm 100, this amazing psalm that uh, stirs our emotions, informs our minds, directs our wills, uh, stimulates our imagination as we consider who God is. And, uh, and all of these psalms inspire worship ultimately, which I think is the point of the whole thing, isn't it? That's why I was created. That's why you were created. That's how God designed us to worship, to be worshipers. And we're all worshiping something, whether it's God or not. 
is the next question to ask ourselves. But of course, if we're living as God designed us to live, if our hearts are dialed into him, if we're tuned into him, if we're um, training our affections in his direction, then we begin to see that he's good and his love endures forever and his faithfulness continues through all generations. What a beautiful psalm this is. The Lord is God and the Lord is good. The ending of the psalm is devoted to an exposition of why the nations should join us in praising the Lord. Our worship is not only to be joyful and universal, but it's to be reasonable. God is great. God is amazing. He's awesome. We're to know that the Lord is God, not the culture, not the, not the fears that we have, not the giants we face, the storms that are in pursuit of us all the time that we seem to be drowning in. No, the Lord is God, and we're to turn our hearts to him and to be praising him. It is he who made us. We are his, and this is so beautiful. The goodness of our God um, is the way it wraps up. There is ground to praise him, not only for what he has done, not only for who he is, um, but for what he is. He's good. Uh, this is wonderful. Um, where does his goodness consist? Stott says it consists in his love, which endures forever, and his faithfulness. So comforting, such good words for us as we enter the middle part of this week. I pray for you and for me that we'll keep being mindful of God in this way. Let's uh, open our hearts to him right now as we close in prayer. Lord, thank you for the birds that are singing outside of my window right now. Thank you for this day, another day to breathe, to live, to to have being, and to know that I belong to you and my friends belong to you as well. Lord, set us on a course for your glory today. Uh, I pray that you, Holy Spirit, would flood our hearts with your presence, with your peace, and with your joy and that we might delight in you as you delight in your children this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.